Good evening. Uh, I work for Gulf News, and, and so it's talk from the print point of view. Um, and and print has survived uh, the arrival of the telephone, radio, and TV. And was still, we we have to work with social media. There's no question of, of whether we will or will not work with it. We, and I would distinguish between social media and online journalism. Uh, we're talking here whether social media will destroy or replace print. And that's, that's the debate. Yep. And I can't see it happening because um, at the moment they're doing two different things. Um, they may, in 30, 40 years' time, which is a very long time indeed, have some kind of effect. But at the moment, uh, I'm talking pure money, revenue, overwhelmingly large, our print pays the majority of our revenue. Um, and we're not unique in that. It's not a small local effect in the Middle East. It's happening in the Middle East, it's happening in India, it's happening in China, across the major markets of the world. In the declining European and American markets, it's true, they have some problems in print. So I, I can't see the, the social media having that effect. But the final point to edit what you're saying is trust. You, you have the, the, the sad story of the, uh, the Saudi lesbian who turned out to be an American 45 year old man. He faked the account. And so Syrian you, and Scottish, but yes. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 poor, the poor lady's picture turned out to be a Scottish woman. Now there's a very odd legal case coming there. I can't imagine who's going to solve that one. Yeah, and that's back to credibility again. Exactly. Uh, so could you pass the mic forward to the lady in green there? Just, just very, very sorry. Um, most newspapers have a, a, a political agenda depending on who runs them. So you, the credibility you're following follows the political agenda of the company. Just a couple of questions to Alan, really. I mean, you did in your rebuttal quote, uh, uh, you know, huge numbers of people using the social media. Uh, has there ever been any research on perhaps how much of the actual communication or perhaps how, much, how many of the actual people are using it for hardcore news? And how many are using it for inane conversations with each other, like uh, I'm uh, having orange juice, etc., and much worse, A. So those numbers really have to be qualified. And B, you made a second point, which, which was a very good one, that you are not really distributing uh, hardcore trusted news, but online version of it. So online version of print media may be eating up its own share. That I would understand, but how do you make the jump uh, to saying that you are eating up, or our social is eating up that share? You're, you're really literally distributing the online version of print media, right? Well, uh, again, I'll, I'll raise the issue of the Huffington Post. Um, it's an online newspaper that was created by one woman, and she sold it for 315 million and took a very nice job as uh, the head of content for AOL. Uh, that, that was never printed. Um, you make a very valid point about the amount of nonsense that's on social media. Um, I'm sure that the, of the stats that I, I read of Twitter, of the 95 million tweets a day, I'm sure that more than half of them are just spamming robots. Yeah, I mean... So there's a lot of people tweeting about what they had for breakfast. Yeah. Is this really worth it? And, and, and again, I'll, 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 I'll... Yeah, but again, I think yeah, sorry, but again, I'll stress the point I made earlier. It depends on what plan you're using social, uh, social media for. Everyone here is, is discussing journalism, but we're not discussing advertising. You can advertise your service for free on social media, whereas it will cost you I don't know, 10,000, 15,000 dirhams to take a full page ad out that runs for one day. If you can recirculate your blog that puts you as a, a, a thought leader exactly to the right people you know because they share their information, you can make an absolute fortune. You can work online. I've done it myself. I haven't made a fortune, but I've, I've got freelance work through LinkedIn and it didn't cost me anything to get it up and running. And I got this job through Twitter because I saw a tweet at six o'clock in the morning advertising it. So it's not just about news content. You have to think about the revenue stream of what you can make from it, the, the revenue uh, that it would cost you to take a newspaper ad out and hope that someone sees it on one particular day in one particular area or targeted advertising through social media channels. I think the, uh, the balance is, is slightly in my favour. 
Okay, so we're coming to uh, end of times now. So we're going to take two more questions, one here from the gentleman and one here from the gentleman behind. And then we'll give both of the speakers one minute to uh, wrap up and we'll take the vote again and see if we've managed to change any minds. Sir. Um, hi. My question is for you, Neil. Um, I'm pretty sure that social media will not kill uh, the print. I think, in fact, it's not social media. It's just the digital that the print world. It will take some time, but it will happen. My question is not so much about social media, it's about the concept of WikiLeaks, because we talk about credibility here, but it seems to me that digital is the new jungle. You know, jungle, um, where you used to have Robin Wood that was fighting against those big kings, and it's looked that WikiLeaks is the, through the digital, is the way you have many, many Robin Woods that actually are taking a print in uh, just in front. They said, just, you just not say the truth to people. And I was wondering if you are more scared about social media than Wikileaks, because even though we know that all government will try to kill Wikileaks, and, and again and again, like, like remember the Napster concept where you can download free music, then all the government killed Napsters, and now it's all over the place and there is nothing that it's you can do. It's an interesting point and one that's coming up on the Twitter uh, feed as well, which I is really talking about the, uh, the ability of social media to put things out there that perhaps print media isn't doing, whether that's true or not. Yeah, I think, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at a number of the companies, they've realized, a number of the publishing companies, they've realized that, that just publishing what they newsprint um, online is not, a, is not a justifiable business model. It's not going to work for them because a number of those companies have seen that the content that they put online um, immediately put somewhere else as well. So you know, there's a huge copyright IP infringement issue that, you know, that we, we know and um, have to tackle at some point. Um, I think, therefore, that you know, the companies are beginning to realise that actually they need to protect that content that they put online. Um, and are going to move, you know, more and more people will move to, to protect that. Um, I think the, for the print, the print industry, it's, if, if they're not um, looking at the new technologies that come down the, the tubes to them, as it were, uh, and embrace them um, and utilise them in the best way forwards, in whatever way that might be, you know, absolutely social media is another way of reaching another part of the audience and getting in, you know, the new stories across and pushing people back to the newspaper to go and read it. Um, I think if companies aren't doing that and looking at those, those new websites, be it WikiLeaks, be it whatever it is in you know, three months' time, because I'm sure there'll be something new, um, you know, then they're, they're in trouble. Um, and I think that's the key point for, for publishing companies as opposed to print media generally. Right. Gentlemen here at the front, yes. then one more and we are done. Hi, hi Neil. Um, for your argument, uh, I think one thing that you said in your opening re remarks is that um, uh, she, you know, something to think about that, that print media has survived the television and radio station, uh, or radio, uh, and, and those two mediums have been around for almost a century, for a long or so. Um, but I think the, um, the, the new digital era that we're entering is slightly different than the, um, the, the television or the radio. Um, I think it's more powerful and it's progressing much faster into, into something big. And our arguments tonight are are very much based on the present point of time, correct? Yep, that's true. Um, going forward, do you see the print media ever dying with the progression of the technology, and the, especially of digital technology? Well, I think the, the comparison to draw is back in, I think it's back in sort of 80s or 90s um, with the advent of computers and you know, technology and WAN and land infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. Um, we all talked about the idea of having you know, paperless offices. We're not there yet. Um, Will in you know 100 years time you know we still be using paper? Like hard to, it's hard to predict that far out, but I certainly think for the next 30, 40 years that, that newsprint is still going to be here, um, and print media will still have a role. Um, I think it comes back to the one thing that I said: if the media has a unique experience for that person, whatever that uniqueness is, it's the touch and feel, the smell, the black uh, ink on your thumbs, depending on which paper you read. Um, then, you know, as long as it's got that unique experience, it will survive. As soon as it hasn't, as soon as somebody comes up with uh, a technology, you know, that feels like paper and that you can read the paper on, maybe it'll be dead. Who knows? 
I've been promised technology that's going to zoom ideas into my head in the next 40 years, and I'll be very upset if I don't get it. Our very last question of the evening. Yeah. Uh, I just would like to know whether you agree or not. Do you think that the one who will decide that the print media will dead are the advertisers? Very good question. Currently, Twitter are not making money, so they might be dead in a few That's a, a very good question, and I was going to save this for, this for my closing. Um, Volkswagen. Volkswagen have a car called the Fox. Uh, it's similar to the Volkswagen Polo that they sell here, and they needed to target 17 to 24-year-olds in Brazil. Um, they didn't do this through uh, print media. They didn't take adverts in magazines. What they did was they, they created a mini website uh, and utilized Google. They created a special hashtag on Twitter, and they told people to uh, tweet their Planet Fox hashtag. And as somebody tweeted, the Google Earth camera zoomed in a millimeter from space, and they hit in Brazil around Sao Paulo and they had video cameras on the ticket locations um, and as people tweeted in you know I'm tweeting crazily my thumbs are burning etc 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 the, the camera zoomed in the people won the tickets on the location and then it zoomed right back out again okay now they targeted the people they wanted uh, they got them to their event they got exposure for their product and they did it for the cost of a, of a, a micro site uh, they did this. So when you talk about advertisers, you've got a very strong point. An advertiser, that, an advertiser that thinks they can advertise in a magazine and get their message across without knowing exactly who's seeing it um, is not really one that's going to be surviving in five years' time, I wouldn't have thought. I think the, the fact that you can target exactly your target audience on a computer is really the way forward. Mm -hmm. I think just on that, you know, the print company that doesn't know who gets the paper and who's reading it um, shot itself in the foot in the first place. Um, I think most publishing companies know, have a very clear view of, of who generally is reading the newspaper or the print uh, articles, uh, and therefore you know, clearly are targeting advertisers who are specifically trying to reach those people. Um, will, will advertising decide it? I don't think so. I think, again, it comes back to the fundamental point that the business model has to change and people are realising that, that they need to start, search for, for you know, increasing ways of making money. Um, and as I say, News International has certainly gone down that route, including you know, introducing the paywall. Um, I suspect others will follow. Um, it has an impact, of course, um, and it, that impact will be um, interesting to see how that pans over the next five years. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for all the questions. Uh, before we allow the speakers to do the last minute each, uh, at Twigger here on uh, Twitter is saying that perhaps newspapers should move to a weekly model exclusively that would allow them to be more reflective and out of date because of the daily news cycle. And um, at David John Burns, a print, maybe the audience should have to write down their questions and have them vetted first to make sure I quite like.